The B-21 raider's mere existence sends chills down the spines of the Houthi rebels in Yemen, Hamas in the Gaza Strip, Iran's regime, and Russia's military strategists. The supersonic B-1B Lancer remains a force to be reckoned with, flexing its muscles around the globe. And nestled in the heart of the Indo-Pacific, Guam holds a secret. B-52S stand ready to unleash their might. Could this be a glimpse into the future of aerial warfare? How will these iconic bombers shape the global security landscape? Join us as we delve into the world of America's most advanced bombers in This Secret U.S. Stealth Bomber Was Secretly Tested in Yemen. The B-21 Raider, the Air Force's latest stealth bomber, remains veiled in secrecy, yet its recent unveiling signaled a seismic shift in military aviation. It represents the culmination of over three decades of relentless innovation in stealth and strike power, designed to redefine air dominance. While its first flight is eagerly awaited, the B-21 promises a quantum leap forward for conventional and nuclear missions, marking a new era in American military might. The B-21's lineage is clear. It stands on the shoulders of its predecessor, the iconic B-2 Spirit. And when introduced, the Spirit's flying wing design and specialized coatings drastically reduced its radar signature, a pioneering feat. But the B-21 isn't just a cosmetic upgrade. The Air Force aims to purchase around 100 B-21S, a significantly more extensive fleet than the limited B-2 production run. This underscores the importance of stealth in an era where rival nations are developing increasingly sophisticated air defense systems. The B-21 retains the core principles of the flying wing design, an inherently stealthy shape. However, materials science and manufacturing advancements give the Raider an even cleaner profile. Expect a cutting-edge stealth coating designed to absorb or deflect radar waves with unprecedented effectiveness. This level of undetectability is a game-changer. While previous bombers might rely on speed or electronic countermeasures to survive, the B-21 is designed to slip through enemy airspace practically unnoticed, opening up new tactical and strategic possibilities. Its ability to penetrate heavily defended territory and strike with precision significantly alters any conflict calculus. Stealth, however, isn't the B-21's only advantage. Decades of technological progress mean the Raider will boast advanced sensors, targeting systems, and a capacity to deploy a wide range of munitions. It's envisioned as a multi-role bomber, adaptable to changing strategic needs. Furthermore, the B-21 is designed with an open architecture. This means it can be rapidly upgraded with new weapons and systems developed years into the future, ensuring it remains at the forefront of air power for the foreseeable future. This combination of unparalleled stealth, modern avionics, and adaptability makes the B-21 Raider a formidable force multiplier. It strengthens the U.S. Air Force's strike capabilities and enhances its ability to gather intelligence and coordinate with other assets across the battle space. The B-21 Raider isn't just a marvel of stealth engineering. It's designed to be a cornerstone of future U.S. air dominance. One of its most intriguing features is the potential for unmanned flights. While the initial rollout will include human crews, the B-21's architecture allows for future variants to operate without pilots. This opens up a realm of possibilities. Remote missions flown from half a world away, removing the risk to air crews in highly contested airspace. Imagine the Raider striking with pinpoint accuracy from incredible distances, controlled by secure satellite links back to its home base. But stealth and drone capabilities are just part of the equation. The B-21 boasts a staggering operational range, estimated at up to 6,000 miles without refueling. This targets almost any continent, particularly bases in the continental U.S. No longer would the Air Force rely predominantly on overseas bases or aircraft carrier groups, making its power projection even more flexible and unpredictable. Of course, this leap in capability is costly. The current per-aircraft cost of the B-21 Raider sits at around $750 million, while significantly lower than the B-2 Spirit's $2 billion price tag. This still represents a massive investment. However, the Air Force is betting long-term on the B-21, 
Investing in a platform designed for adaptability in a multi-decade lifespan is seen as a wiser strategy than relying on continuously updating older airframes. And there's the crucial issue of fleet size. As with the B-2, if the production run remains small, the unit cost of the B-21 will skyrocket. Securing a commitment to purchase at least 100 bombers is key to the program's affordability. A more extensive fleet also ensures resilience. Even in combat losses or accidents, the Air Force would retain a significant stealth strike force. The B-21's role extends far beyond conventional warfare. It represents the first upgrade to the U.S. nuclear triad in decades. Land-based missiles, submarine-launched missiles, and long-range bombers. This triad guarantees a second strike capability, the cornerstone of nuclear deterrence. The aging B-52 Stratofortress and even older B-1B Lancer are reaching their limits. With its ability to penetrate modern air defenses, the Raider ensures this crucial leg of America's nuclear deterrent remains credible. The rise of hypersonic missiles has led some to question the wisdom of investing in stealth bomber technology. While a formidable threat, hypersonics are currently a one-shot weapon. The B-21, on the other hand, is reusable and can deliver a wide range of conventional or nuclear payloads. Furthermore, its advanced sensors and communications suite allow it to gather critical battlefield intelligence, making the Raider an even more versatile asset for commanders. The B-21 Raider isn't simply an aircraft. It's a testament to America's enduring commitment to technological and military dominance. This stealth bomber, shrouded in advanced engineering secrets, signifies a new era in strategic power projection. Yet even as the Raider ascends, another icon of American air power endures. Could the legendary B-52 Stratofortress, a veteran of countless conflicts, hold the key to a future where old and new work in deadly tandem? The B-52 Stratofortress isn't just an aircraft, it's a symbol of unwavering dominance, the embodiment of America's enduring commitment to projecting power on a global scale. Born in the fires of the Cold War, this strategic bomber has patrolled the skies for over six decades, a testament to engineering brilliance and warfare's changing nature. From its inception, the B-52 broke barriers. In 1946, as Cold War tensions mounted, the U.S. needed a bomber capable of striking deep into the Soviet heartland. The B-52 project evolved rapidly, moving from a straight-wing design to the iconic swept-wing form it maintains today. Its maiden flight in 1952 heralded a new era in strategic air power. Designed for nuclear deterrence, the Stratofortress quickly became the backbone of America's Strategic Air Command, SAC. Its cavernous bomb bays could carry a terrifying payload, ensuring the doctrine of mutually assured destruction that kept a fragile peace during those tense decades. However, the B-52's role wasn't confined to nuclear strikes. It proved remarkably adaptable, serving with distinction in conflicts throughout its long service life. The Vietnam War saw the B-52 transition from purely strategic to frontline bomber. Its immense payload capacity proved devastating against the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese troops. Flying high-altitude carpet bombing raids, the Stratofortress became synonymous with the sheer destructive power of America's military machine. While those bombing campaigns remain controversial, they showcase the B-52's remarkable flexibility. As newer, stealthier strategic bombers like the B-1 and B-2 materialized, the venerable B-52 refused to fade into obscurity. Its high subsonic speeds and low operating costs ensured its continued relevance. It played a prominent role in Operation Desert Storm, striking Iraqi targets and demoralizing the Republican Guard. In more recent conflicts like Operation Iraqi Freedom, the B-52 demonstrated its ability to use precision-guided munitions, adding another layer of versatility to its already impressive arsenal. The B-52's longevity is almost unparalleled. The initial production run saw a staggering 744 aircraft built, with the final B-52H rolling off the line in 1962. That was over 60 years ago, yet the Air Force plans to keep the Stratofortress flying until the 2050S. How is this possible? The answer lies in a series of continuous upgrades and modifications. 
While its basic airframe might be elderly, the B-52 of today is far from the same bomber that first emerged in the 1950s. From the 1960s onwards, the Stratofortress has undergone significant upgrades to extend its service life and enhance its capabilities. Key examples include structural fatigue mitigation. Low-altitude missions took a toll on the B-52's airframe. Programs like High Stress and Pacer Plank involved significant structural strengthening to keep the aircraft flying safely. Modernized avionics. The Connect program modernized the B-52's flight deck with new computers, digital workstations, and secure data links, bringing this Cold War giant into the 21st century. Weapons integration. Systems like the 1760 internal weapons bay upgrade give the B-52 enhanced capacity for modern precision weapons like the JDAM and JASSM. These are just a few changes that have kept the B-52 potent long after many of its contemporaries have retired. This ongoing evolution indeed underscores the brilliance of the original design, proving it capable of adapting to a rapidly shifting technological landscape. The B-52H is the culmination of decades of upgrades and refinements, a testament to the enduring value of the Stratofortress airframe. This variant forms the backbone of today's B-52 fleet, operated by the Air Force Global Strike Command and the Air Force Reserve. While it carries the legacy of the past, the B-52H is a potent war machine ready to meet the challenges of the modern battlefield. One of the most significant features of the B-52H is its power plant, 8 Pratt and Whitney TF. 33 P3-103 turbofan engines give the Stratofortress the muscle needed for long-range missions at high subsonic speeds. While not as fast as a supersonic bomber, this speed balances efficiency and range, allowing for global reach. The B-52H boasts a combat range of over 8,800 miles, extendable even further through aerial refueling. This range means a B-52H can take off from bases within the continental United States and strike targets globally without needing forward bases. This long-range capability is about more than just delivering bombs. The B-52H can carry out a wide array of missions, including Strategic Bombing the B-52H's traditional role continues. It carries a mix of nuclear and conventional ordnance, including air-launched cruise missiles, giving it tremendous destructive potential. Close Air Support, CS. B-52Hs have proven surprisingly effective in supporting troops on the ground, using precision-guided munitions to strike targets close to friendly forces. Offensive Counter-Air. The ability to carry cruise missiles makes the B-52 a threat to enemy airfields and defense systems. Maritime Operations The B-52's extensive loiter time allows it to perform maritime surveillance and mine-laying duties. The B-52H has received a suite of technological upgrades to enhance its effectiveness in these roles. Advanced targeting pods, night vision capabilities, and secure data links give crews vastly improved situational awareness compared to the early days of the Stratofortress. This allows it to strike targets precisely day or night in all weather conditions. Despite its age, the B-52H shows no signs of slowing down. The Air Force plans a series of far-reaching updates to transform the B-52 into the B-52J, or possibly even the B-52K. The most immediately visible change will be the replacement of the ancient TF-33 engines with modern, fuel-efficient commercial turbofans. This should drastically improve the B-52's range and endurance. Other upgrades focus on streamlining the bomber's profile and modernizing its sensors. A new and more powerful radar will enhance targeting capabilities. There are even discussions about adding defensive lasers to protect against missile threats. These changes should guarantee the B-52's relevance well into the 2050S. The B-52 Stratofortress is an extraordinary example of how longevity and adaptability are crucial to success in military aviation. It has transcended its original Cold War role, becoming a multi-purpose workhorse that continues to serve as a cornerstone of American strategic power projection. Yet, even as this iconic bomber endures, 
another aircraft continues to turn heads on the global stage. The B-1B Lancer, with its sleek lines and supersonic speeds, has seen a resurgence in recent deployments, participating in joint drills with key allies like South Korea and Japan. Could these exercises hint at the B-1B's evolving role in a world where tensions simmer and alliances are more crucial than ever? The B-1B Lancer has a fascinating and somewhat tumultuous history. Born from a canceled program and resurrected by an administration seeking to modernize America's strategic might, the B-1B is an aircraft that has defied expectations. Its history traces back to the 1960s, when the B-52 Stratofortress needed a successor. The United States Air Force sought a supersonic bomber that could penetrate Soviet airspace, overcoming the limitations of the high-flying but slow B-52. Rockwell International was challenged to develop a sleek, variable-sweep wing design capable of reaching Mach 2.2. Known as the B-1A, this version promised high-altitude, high-speed flight and the ability to weave through enemy defenses seamlessly. However, in 1977, the Carter administration halted the B-1A program due to escalating costs, the introduction of cruise missiles, and the early stages of the stealthy B-2 Spirit. The four existing B-1A prototypes continued flight testing, but their future seemed uncertain. Yet history had a dramatic twist in store for the Lancer. In 1981, the newly elected Reagan administration sought a bomber to bridge the gap between the existing B-52 fleet and the futuristic B-2. With its development in progress, the B-1 was the solution, returning as the B-1B. While retaining the core airframe of the B-1A, the reborn B-1B underwent extensive modifications. Maximum speed was reduced in favor of more excellent low-level performance and enhanced survivability. Changes to the intake geometry reduced the B-1B's radar signature, a priority in the advancing world of air defense systems. Further upgrades focused on the Lancer's electronic warfare suite, providing increased protection against a sophisticated Soviet air defense network. While the B-1B no longer aspired to Mach 2 plus speeds, it would excel in a critical new role. It now boasted a sizable conventional payload capacity and refined low-level flight capabilities, making it an adaptable, long-range strike aircraft. The first production B-1B flew in 1984 and entered service with Strategic Air Command in 1986. By 1988, 100 B-1Bs had graced the skies, and while its story started amidst the tensions of the Cold War, this bomber would prove its worth in the decades to come. The B-1B Lancer's valid baptism of fire came in the twilight years of the Cold War. In 1998, Operation Desert Fox pitted the bomber against Saddam Hussein's Iraq. While conceived as a strategic nuclear bomber, the B-1B is now primarily employed as a conventional strike asset. This marked the start of the Lancer's transformation from a niche strategic tool to a versatile workhorse capable of supporting a vast array of missions. Just a year later, the B-1B Lancer again played a crucial role during North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO operations against Serbian forces in Kosovo. During Operation Allied Force, six B-1B Lancers delivered a staggering 20% of the total ordnance, a testament to their immense strike potential. As the threat of traditional superpower conflict receded, the War on Terror reshaped the B-1B's role again. In the skies over Afghanistan as part of Operation Enduring Freedom, the Lancers became a critical asset. Their ability to loiter for extended periods, deliver diverse guided munitions, and provide close air support for troops on the ground proved invaluable. The B-1B dropped 40% of all bombs in this conflict, demonstrating unparalleled effectiveness. The campaign marked a new chapter, with the B-1B becoming the backbone of America's long-range conventional strike capacity. This role was further solidified during Operation Iraqi Freedom. While the percentage of sorties flown was minuscule, the B-1B accounted for 43% of all Joint Direct Attack Munitions JDAMs, dropped during the invasion. The B-1B's ability to strike fortified targets precisely in urban areas highlighted its adaptability, 
It had transformed from a deep penetration bomber meant to threaten Soviet heartlands into a precision strike tool capable of supporting operations across the spectrum of conflict. As a testament to its importance, the B-1B fleet remains active, undergoing continuous improvements. Recent deployments include joint drills with South Korea and Japan, projecting American power in a region where tensions with North Korea and an increasingly assertive China are at the forefront of strategic concerns. These exercises demonstrate the B-1B's continued relevance, showcasing its ability to support allies and signal resolve as part of a larger power projection strategy. The B-1B's long and successful combat experience has driven modernization efforts. Upgrades to its radar and avionics have maintained and enhanced its lethality in the face of evolving air defenses. Introducing systems like Link-16 has improved situational awareness and connectivity within the modern networked battlefield. By stripping out obsolete components and nuclear capabilities, the Lancer has become more accessible to maintain and more reliable extending its service life even as its successor, the B-21 Raider, looms on the horizon. The story of the B-1B Lancer is one of perseverance, adaptability, and evolution. From its origins in the Cold War to its role in the global war on terror and contemporary power projection, this bomber has repeatedly proven its value. While the B-21 Raider prepares to take the spotlight, the B-1B will likely continue to fly serving as a critical part of America's arsenal and a symbol of the nation's commitment to projecting strength across the globe. Yet it's not the only legendary bomber on the world stage. The venerable B-52 Stratofortress, a true icon, has also recently found renewed relevance. Its deployments to the Korean Peninsula stand as a stark reminder of strategic deterrence and a show of force against North Korea. Could these missions hint at a changing dynamic where older weapon systems take on new importance in a world of simmering tensions? The deployment of B-52 bombers to the Korean Peninsula is a move steeped in historical significance and a stark response to the escalating threat posed by North Korea. The Korean War, fought from 1950 to 1953, is a conflict that technically never ended. An armistice brought a ceasefire, but North and South Korea remain locked in a precarious stalemate. This unresolved conflict sets the stage for the B-52's return, highlighting its role as a symbol of America's unwavering commitment to regional stability and its continued promise of overwhelming force. North Korea's recent actions have added fuel to the simmering tensions. Massive anti-U.S. rallies in Pyongyang, featuring fiery speeches and vows of revenge, signal a hostile shift in rhetoric. North Korea, frustrated by the combined military exercises between the U.S. and South Korea, accuses its adversaries of plotting an invasion. The B-52's presence serves as a blunt retort to these accusations, underscoring the cost of any potential North Korean aggression. Beyond the rhetoric, North Korea has actively bolstered its military capabilities. Since the start of 2022, it has conducted over 100 missile tests in a relentless push to expand its nuclear arsenal. With rockets designed to threaten both the U.S. mainland and South Korea, North Korea seeks to alter the balance of power. The B-52 deployment is an essential element of the U.S. deterrent strategy. Its imposing presence serves as a visible, undeniable reminder of the vast destructive power America can bring to bear should North Korea embark on a path of open conflict. The B-52, a veteran of countless wars and conflicts, is well suited for this mission. Its capacity to carry a wide array of weapons, both conventional and nuclear, gives the U.S. immense flexibility to respond proportionally to any provocation. While the B-52's origins can be traced back to the Cold War, this iconic bomber has continually evolved and remains a vital asset in the current geopolitical landscape. The recent deployment of B-52 EUEs is not an isolated incident, but rather part of a broader pattern. The Biden administration has pledged to enhance strategic assets' regular visibility to reassure South Korea and deter North Korean aggression. While the B-52S may return to their home bases, the U.S. commitment to the region is ongoing. Will heightened tensions and North Korea's ambitions push these two adversaries closer to a dangerous tipping point?
While its age might suggest otherwise, the B-52 Stratofortress remains a formidable war machine. Its vast payload capacity allows it to deliver a diverse range of conventional and nuclear ordnance, providing a flexible response to any threat level. This bomber is a workhorse, able to loiter for extended durations, delivering precision strikes or blanketing an area with a devastating carpet of bombs. The B-52 stands ready to unleash overwhelming force against an enemy, and its presence alone is a powerful deterrent. Continuous upgrades have ensured this Cold War bomber stays relevant in the 21st century. Modernized avionics, improved targeting systems, and compatibility with advanced weapons like the Joint Direct Attack Munition, JDAM, keep the B-52 highly capable across various mission sets. Ongoing upgrades, including replacing the ancient engines, aim to extend its service life well into the 2050S. This enduring aircraft is a testament to the ingenuity of its original design and the Air Force's commitment to maximizing the effectiveness of its arsenal. The deployment of B-52S to the Korean Peninsula is critical to America's broader strategic posture in the Indo-Pacific. This region's vast distances and complex geopolitical landscape demand a force capable of quickly and effectively projecting power. The B-52 is just one piece of this multifaceted approach, representing America's ability to strike swiftly and decisively across vast distances. However, to truly understand how deployments like this one in the Korean Peninsula fit the bigger picture, we must focus further on the Pacific. The island of Guam holds a critical piece of the puzzle. Could this island become the primary staging ground for the iconic B-52 in its new role as guarantor of American influence in the region? The deployment of B-52 Stratofortress bombers to Guam signals a shift in the strategic dynamics of the Indo-Pacific. No longer merely a historical relic, the B-52 assumes a new and pivotal role amidst rising tensions and a rapidly evolving security landscape. The island of Guam, a U.S. territory deep within the Western Pacific, is the linchpin of this strategy. Its location puts potential adversaries on notice as a stark reminder of America's reach and resolve to protect its regional interests. The Indo-Pacific is a vast and complex theater, marked by cooperation and potential conflict. The rise of China as a global power, with its expanding military capabilities and ambitions, has disrupted the delicate balance that existed for decades. China's increasing assertiveness in the South China Sea and its growing influence over smaller nations create anxiety and the potential for miscalculation. Simultaneously, North Korea's unpredictable behavior, nuclear ambitions, and ballistic missile development pose a direct threat to American allies like South Korea and Japan. Within this fraught geopolitical environment, the B-52 bombers deployed to Guam take on new significance. Their presence is a clear message to adversaries in the region. The B-52's long-range, large payload capacity and ability to carry nuclear weapons make it a formidable symbol of American power projection. Guam, strategically located within striking distance of critical flashpoints, allows the Air Force to respond swiftly and decisively to any provocation. While primarily associated with nuclear deterrence during the Cold War, the B-52 in Guam has a broader mission. Its presence underscores America's commitment to the security of its regional allies and partners. The B-52, as part of a broader strategic posture, contributes to a credible deterrence posture aimed at discouraging potential aggressors and ensuring stability in a region vital to global trade and security. However, the presence of these bombers raises an essential question. Does the enduring power of deterrence, as embodied by the B-52, remain effective against the evolving threats in the Indo-Pacific? The deployment of B-52S to Guam aligns seamlessly with the U.S. Air Force's focus on Agile Combat Employment AC. This emerging doctrine emphasizes flexibility, adaptability, and the ability to operate from various locations. ACE recognizes that future conflicts are unlikely to unfold like in the past. Adversaries invest heavily in technologies that deny the U.S. access to large, established bases. American forces must be prepared to disperse, operate from smaller, less equipped airfields, and adapt quickly to changing circumstances. The B-52, while a massive aircraft by any standard, is well suited to the ACE concept. 
It boasts a long ferry range, making it less reliant on forward logistics hubs than more specialized bombers. Guam serves as a launch pad. From here, a small contingent of B-52S can project power across the vast distances of the Indo-Pacific theater. With its established infrastructure, Guam can support these bombers, while the concept of Agile Combat Employment AC, allows for their further dispersal in a crisis. These bombers could rapidly move to smaller, potentially austere airfields closer to areas of operation. These airfields might need more hardened shelters and extensive maintenance facilities. Agile Combat Employment AC, dictates that B-52 crews must adapt to operating with a smaller footprint, relying on pre-positioned or air-delivered supplies and essential equipment. From these dispersed locations, only a few B-52As could pose a significant threat, complicating an adversary's ability to target them effectively. This dispersal strategy increases survivability and makes American power projection less predictable. The B-52's ability to perform diverse missions further supports the ACE concept. Guam provides access to training areas where bomber crews can hone their skills across a wide spectrum of operations. Training can focus on long-range strike missions, maritime operations, or even close air support for ground forces. B-52 ISS could participate in joint exercises with allies like Australia and Japan, demonstrating interoperability and strengthening the bonds of a united front against potential aggression. The flexibility built into the ACE doctrine allows these bombers to shift roles quickly, providing commanders with a versatile tool to respond as threats arise. While Guam is central to U.S. strategy in the Indo-Pacific, it's worth noting that other locations may also play a role. As part of the Agile Combat Employment AC concept, dispersal is key. The Air Force could look towards islands within the region, seeking agreements with other nations to allow B-52 operations from their airfields. This could extend the reach of American power even further, adding an element of unpredictability that challenges adversaries. However, the ACE concept requires more than just the dispersal of aircraft. It demands a transformation in how the Air Force approaches logistics, command and control, and communication. Prepositioning supplies, developing rapid refueling and rearming capabilities, and establishing secure communication networks across dispersed locations are all vital components of successful ACE implementation. Guam itself may become a testbed for these new concepts, providing valuable lessons applicable to future military operations. The deployment of B-52 bombers to Guam is a powerful statement of American resolve and flexibility in the Indo-Pacific theater. While an aging bomber, the B-52 remains a potent symbol of American military power. The strategic location of Guam and the Air Force's focus on the Agile Combat Employment Doctrine transformed the Stratofortress into a versatile and unpredictable piece of America's deterrence strategy in this complex and dynamic region.